Hello, Western Michigan. Hope you're doing well. This is Wayne Hoagland, your bishop, wanting to greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here as we approach the Christmas season, I'm happy to be sitting in lovely St. Mark's Church in Grand Rapids. And I want to take this opportunity to uh, share with you some thoughts on what Christmas means to me. This uh, Earlier this year, Dana and I were privileged to take a number of folks from the diocese on pilgrimage to Israel. And we visited uh, Jesus' footsteps in the northern part of Israel in Galilee and walked where he walked in the city of Capernaum. After our time in Capernaum, we made our way south along the Jordan River into Bethlehem. And in Bethlehem, we visited the traditional site of Jesus' nativity, which is the church of the nativity, which is a beautiful ancient church in the middle of the city of Bethlehem in which uh, there is an altar that sits over a cave in which is, it is believed that Jesus was born. Not in a barn in, in some back of some hotel, but actually in a cave on the, on the hillsides of Bethlehem. And in this cave, we, we went down into the small opening underneath and there were the 35 or so of us who were down there and we got to kneel in the spot which is traditionally believed that Jesus was actually born. And it was a very, very holy moment for each of us. We could spend just a few seconds there. And then as we all finished our uh, few, few moments of reverence at the, at the traditional spot, we sang O Holy Night together in this lovely setting which was had a great acoustic and it was really truly moving. Christmas is for us the feast of the incarnation. God's coming into the world in the form of a child to be present among us so that we can know what it's like to be in relationship with God. God becomes other. God becomes more than God's self. God enters into our skin, is birthed in us, with us, among us, so that we can be in relationship with God. That's what is at the heart of the meaning of the incarnation and the great gift of Christmas, that great new light that's come into the world that is shining forth, giving us knowledge of the love of God in the actual presence of God among us. So this Feast of the Incarnation, this Christmas is really, really important to us as Anglicans, as Episcopalians. We tend to find a great deal of our theology rooted in this incarnation, in this gift of God coming among us. There's something for us that is tremendously holy and powerful about God coming to be among us, dwelling among us. The name that we give Jesus in this is Emmanuel, God is with us. And in this we are reminded that we're never alone, that we are never alone, that God can and will do anything that God can to be in relationship with us, that we are so loved and desired that God will do anything to come and be among us. What's important in this incarnation, in this understanding, is that God became other. God stepped into our lives, put on our flesh, so that we could be in relationship with God. Because otherwise, it's difficult to understand the other. I think in that, what God is saying to us is that we need to make ourselves as vulnerable and humble as we can to enter into the lives of others, to give ourselves to the lives of others, to understand the lives of others, just as God did with us, as a way for us to find peace and harmony in the world around us. There's a lot of strife and chaos and confusion in the world these days. And what we tend to do is to fall into camps of likeness, fall into places where we feel comfortable with those who look like us or act like us or think like us or pray like us. And that's nice and convenient, but I think in the incarnation, God challenges us to do more. God challenges us to be present with those who are not like us, to embrace those who are not like us, and to allow ourselves to be embraced 
can be with those who are different from ourselves. So that we can bridge those gaps of division between us and knock down those walls that separate us so that we can help build the kingdom that God is seeking to create, which is not fully here, but just in glimpses in the world around us. Traditionally, we celebrate Christmas by giving presents, gifts, things that we want to share with others to show them how much we love them and appreciate them and admire them, to show our gratefulness for them being in our lives. And I know as a child, I couldn't wait for Christmas morning to run out to see what was under the tree and to be awash in the joy of that moment and to see what, I, what gifts Santa had given me. What I want to challenge us to think about this year at Christmas is not what presents we might give or receive, not what items we might feel that we must give someone so that we can show them how much we love them and appreciate them. That's nice and that's lovely. I want to suggest that a better gift at Christmas is a gift of presence, the gift of our being present with each other giving of our lives to one another in terms of our attention, our listening, our, our, our sincere care towards one another and those around us. That that is actually the best gift that we can give and receive at Christmas. And it's consistent with what the incarnation is all about. Anglican theology seems to be rooted and grounded in this knowledge of the incarnation this understanding of God's presence with us. And there can be no greater gift at Christmas time than we give ourselves to one another in sincere hope that in doing so, we can change each other's lives and be transformed into that beautiful person that God has created us to be. Let me read to you a quote from Meister Eckhart about the meaning of Christmas. He says, we are all meant to be mothers of God, for God is always needing to be born in each of us. God is always needing to be born in each of us. Think about that for a moment. What might it mean for God to be birthed, birthed within you? What might it mean if you would Use this time remaining in Advent to create a space for God to find a dwelling within you. And what would that look like in how you live your life forward? How might you give your life to others if God is being birthed within you? Indeed, that is part of what our understanding of baptism is all about, that we are made one with God in Christ through his death and resurrection, and that the Spirit comes and fills us, creates a space within us to make us our truest self. And the best way to express that is how we live our lives, being present with one another, our presence with each other, and in the world. And as we do that day in and day out, that light of Christ will shine forth, showing that the kingdom of God is in and that Christmas isn't just one day a year, it can be every day when we are connected to one another, we are present with one another. So my friends, I wanna wish you a, a very happy and healthy new year and a very, very Merry Christmas and encourage you to give yourself to each other as a present, a fragrant offering of joy and love and compassion and generosity, just like God gives God's self to us in the birth of Christ every Christmas. Merry Christmas.